the Cloud Now Podcast, your launchpad for Amazon Web Services. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this second video uh, from Cloud On Out. Today, I want to talk about AWS SSO. First of all, I think AWS SSO is a very good thing to replace your IAM users with. And second, I want to show you an example of how small and medium-sized business can use AWS SSO for their needs. My name is Andreas, and um, together with Michael, um, I'm running CloudOnout.io. Um, I'm really uh, happy to um, record that second video, and let's dive into it immediately. Okay, first of all, what's the problem that we want to solve? So it is a good practice to use multiple AWS accounts to isolate different workloads from each other. For example, you want to isolate your production environment from your dev and test environments. Or you might want to isolate um, different parts of your organization, maybe different teams or um, different departments from each other. So this is why using multiple AWS accounts is very popular. And it's not uncommon that companies have tens, hundreds, some of them even thousands of AWS accounts that they manage. And then the challenge that arises is how do engineers log into those AWS accounts and how do you grant access to exactly the AWS accounts that one specific engineer needs in their day-to-day -day work? And that is what we want to talk about today. Um, okay, so what is AWS SSO? Um, SSO comes with different aspects, different features. So the most important for us today is AWS SSO allows you to log into all the AWS accounts that belong to your organization. It integrates with AWS organizations to do so. So that's a very important part of it. And then second is um, you have two options when using SSO. You can either use the built-in identity store. So that means you store users and groups within SSO, within the service. So that's comparable to what you have been doing with identity and access management, where you have stored users and groups there. Or alternatively, you can connect it to an existing identity provider, um, for example, an Active Directory, or whatever has a SAML integration. So in my example, I will show you how to integrate it with um, Google's identity provider, because we are using G Suite, uh, for example. And then there is another aspect that I'm not talking about today. And this is AWS SSO also allows you to log into third party services. Um, but that's not something I want to touch on today. Okay. So um, one surprising thing is SSO is completely free. So you have, don't have to pay for using SSO. There are no charges apply. Don't know why, but that's how it is. Um, I'm happy with that. Okay, then um, first of all, where are we coming from? So are you still using IAM users to allow engineers to log into your AWS accounts? If you do so, and if you have a multi-account setup, you typically have one AWS account where you have all the IAM users and groups. And this is the account that an engineer logs into when he wants to access one of your AWS accounts. And then, Typically, you have an IAM role in each of your AWS accounts and the engineer needs, after having logged in with their IAM user, they need to assume a role uh, to basically jump into that other account. So to jump from account A to account B, they are assuming a role and they get temporary credentials and then they can work with these credentials to modify resources, check out something in the console or something. That's how it works. The downside of that is it's a lot of work for administrators. You have to roll out roles to, AWS to all your AWS accounts. You have to configure IAM policies for IAM users and groups, which can be cumbersome, especially with all the limitations that are around that. And uh, on the other hand, the engineers um, are also probably not that happy with that solution because the user experience is not that good because you have to log in as an IAM user first, and then you have to jump into another AWS account. You have to remember 
which account IDs or account names and I'm roles you have to assume. There's no list of all of that that you can just uh, having a look at or something. So it's complicated to use, I would say. And why, why do I tell you all of that? Because you should consider AWS SSO as an alternative to using IAM users. Why that? Because it solves those two problems. First of all, AWS SSO integrates with AWS organizations. And by doing that, SSO is capable of rolling out IAM roles and identity providers to all your AWS accounts within your organization with the click of a button. So no need to automate that part of the process or even worse, do it manually. The other aspect is the user experience for engineers is really good. And that is, why, that is because SSO comes with a login portal. And I will show you that in a minute. Okay, next, I want to jump into a demo and I want to show you how you can use AWS SSO for a small and medium sized business. Um, I'm showing you how we use it at our own company, a two person company, it's only Michael and me. So it's a really small company, but we have used the same approach for consulting clients as well. And we're very happy with the results. So yeah, check out that and then we will dive into all the technical details there. First of all, I want to show you how to log into an AWS account with AWS SO. I talked about it before. We use G Suite, so we use Google as an identity provider. We have set it up with uh, some integration from SSO to Google. And that's why I'm redirected to the Google login prompt when I want to log into one of my AWS accounts. So I'm selecting my, um, my user here and I have to type in my password. Okay, so what happens next is I'm redirected to the SSA, SSO login portal. And what you can see here is it shows me uh, that I have access to AWS accounts. And when I click on that, I find a list of, I think it's 10 AWS accounts that I have personally access to. So I don't need to remember the account IDs or account names. And I also don't need to remember the IAM roles uh, that I have access to, because let's say I want to jump into the AWS account named Vidix Andreas. I can see here, you have access to that IAM role in that account and I can just click um, this link and I'm redirected to the AWS console, um, which is, I think, a very cool way to log into an AWS account, very easy to use. But it gets even better than that because um, SSO does not only support logging into the management console, the web interface, it also allows you to log into the AWS CLI. And I want to show you how that is working. So first of all, um, I'm exporting the AWS profile that I want to use. So that's basically the configuration for which account do I want to use here. And then uh, what I do next is I type in AWS SSO login and this opens my browser and in my browser, it shows me, um, it goes through the same process um, that I've been going before. And now I can click here, sign into AWS CLI, and this goes back into my terminal and now I'm logged in. So that's, that's the magic. So I now have temporary credentials to access that AWS account. And that's really cool stuff. So as AWS STS get caller identity. So this, uh, gets me back um, what I'm using to access the AWS account. What you can see here is I'm accessing the AWS account by using an IAM role that was automatically provisioned by SSO when the account administrator set up everything. So yeah, that works very seamlessly. Very cool stuff um, in my opinion. Okay, so then uh, another thing I wanted to show you is um, sometimes you're not using the AWS CLI, but you're using a third party tool, let's say Terraform, Packer, what have you. And some of those tools don't support um, that mechanism that I've showed you. And when that is the case, um, there is an alternative to that because you can click here, um, instead of click on management console, you click on command line or programmatic access and you get access keys, secrets and session tokens shown here that you can quickly copy and paste to your terminal and then use them from there. 
So this is the alternative when um, the integration is not working for uh, third-party tools. Also very handy in my opinion. And the benefit of that is um, there is there are no um, credentials, no static credentials for IAM users on the machine of your developers anymore. So everything goes through AWS SO and in our case through the Google login. So there's nothing stored on the machine anymore. That's something you had to do when using IAM users, for example. So that's another side effect of all of that. So next, I want to jump to a different perspective. I want to have a look at this from the view of an account administrator. So how do you set up users, groups, and grant access to specific AWS accounts? So that's what I want to do next. First of all, SSO can be managed with the AWS Management Console. So you will find the SSO service in here. By the way, some of the features can also be configured with an API and there's even CloudFormation support um, for that, for some resources at least. Okay, with SSO, um, you find a list of all your AWS accounts within the organization. And what we do now, what I want to do now, next is I want to create a so-called permission set. And the permission set allows users or groups to access AWS accounts, but only viewing access. So they should not be allowed to modify anything in the account. They should just view, be able to see all the resources in there. So that's what I want to do. So to do so, what I do is I create a new permission set. A permission set is basically, you define an IAM policy that should be rolled out to the accounts. And in the background, SSO will create IAM roles with that policy and allow access to specific users. That's what's happening. So I'm choosing um, uh, use an existing job function policy. You can also define your own IAM policy if you want to, probably should do that. But for simplification, I'm using one of the, the pre-built ones here. Um, I'm selecting view only access and I don't use any text. I'm just creating that um, permission policy. So the permission set is now in place. Nothing happened so far, um, but now I can use that permission set to grant a specific user or a group access to an AWS account. And that's what I want to do next. So I go back to the list of all AWS accounts, and this is this comes from your AWS organization. You can filter by organization units if you want to. Um, in our example, we have uh, 10 AWS accounts uh, in place currently, so it's, it's not that uh, big of a list. Um, I'm selecting uh, an AWS account, and now I want to assign the permission set to a specific user and allow access to this uh, AWS account. So I click the Assign User button, select, in, in that case, my own user. So this is Andreas. And um, now I attach the new created view only access uh, permission set. And what happens now in the background, and this is also why this takes a while, um, SSO creates an IAM policy and an IAM role in that AWS account and then grants access for that specific user. So that's uh, what happened in the background. So now the user has not only access to the administrator access permission set, um, but also access to uh, the view only access permission set. Um, so that's how you manage those things from an administrator perspective. I want to talk about um, one specific thing here. So I think uh, for small, medium-sized business, integrating with SAML is probably the interesting option. The alternative is Active Directory support, which has a whole, um, whole list of requirements. Uh, so SAML is probably the easier choice. And when you use SAML, uh, you can set that up here. Um, so you configure an identity source, an external identity provider, set up the security, everything. And um, then you have two options for provisioning. And uh, what does that mean? So there are two options. One is manual provisioning. That means you have to create the users and groups in SSO manually. The only thing that integrates with SAML is the login. So basically you have to create the same users that you have in our case in Google, you have to create them in SSO as well. So that is um, manual provisioning. 
there is also automatic provisioning, um, which uses a protocol that is called System for Cross Domain Identity. And um, this allows you to synchronize users and groups from the identity store, from the external identity store that you use. So that is an option. The benefit is then all users that are in there are automatically replicated to AWS SSO and can log in immediately. The problem with that is that um, Google does not support that protocol, that SCIM protocol uh, for AWS SSO. They only support it for a handful um, of, of services and AWS SSO is not part of the list yet. Um, but I think from for our use case and for small business, that's probably totally fine. I like the idea that I configure my uh, permissions, my groups and users in SSO and just use the login mechanism from the identity provider because then I have, I think, more control over what's happening there. And also the Google administrator does not also, is not also automatically the AWS account administrator. So that's the benefit of it. Of course, it's also uh, more work to do. So that's the two sides um, of everything. Okay. So this is, I think, um, the most important stuff that you need to know uh, from an administrator perspective. And um, this is um, also the end of the demo. Okay, so we started up with an introduction to SSO and why SSO can be a replacement for IAM users. And I hope you, I could really show you the benefits of using SSO instead of IAM users. Um, and then I showed you an example of how we use it with our two-person company and the way you could use it as well for SMBs. And if you have any questions, I encourage you um, to post them in the Cloudonaut community. So community.cloudonaut.io is um, where you will find a posting already with that video included as well. And that's the perfect way to start a discussion, to ask questions and um, to get in into contact with us, but also with the rest of the community. So that is uh, highly recommended. And then I want to say thank you. So thanks for uh, watching this video. Um, please, please uh, send me your feedback. So how did you enjoy the video? And what can we do better? What are the topics that you are interested in for our next videos? So please write in, uh, contact me on Twitter or via email or use the community, community.cloudonaudio as well. Um, that's, that's, that would be very, very helpful for me. So thanks a lot for watching. And I'm um, looking forward for the next video already. Bye.